Okay, so we're now in the uh, second conference. Uh, before I continue, are there any questions from our talk? Okay, so we talked about what God has shown us, and it is to let me just do justice, love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God, with your God. So the second topic is love mercy. So we spoke about love before our break, and that love is, as we said, not a good feeling nor an intense emotion. True, authentic love is unconditional and not optional. So it's not optional. Because love is a decision and we decide to love mercy. Now people say God is love and God is merciful, and it is true. However, people come to this conclusion and believe they can do anything they want and God will forgive them because God loves them and God is merciful. And even if they don't repent or turn back to God, they say that God will still forgive them. Some people hold God hostage, demanding that he does what they tell him. And we see this very clearly during the pandemic. Many people pray to God begging him to stop the pandemic because they say he is merciful and loving. And yes, we need to pray to God to stop the pandemic. And yes, he's merciful and loving. There's no question about that. And yet for some of them, they would beg God to help them and stop the pandemic and then turn around and continue to live in sin. So what, when people do that, I guess the question is, or the questions can be, what God do they worship? Is it a God who tolerates sin? A God who is a slave? Or a God who blesses sin? But God is not our slave who does whatever we command him. He is almighty God the King of kings and Lord of lords. He is the thrice holy God whom nothing impure can stand before him. Some will quote 1 John chapter 4, verse 8, God is love. But as I said earlier, Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 tells us, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. God is merciful because he is just. And God is just because he is merciful. God is love, therefore he is merciful. And God is love, therefore he is just. We cannot separate justice from mercy because they are two sides of the same coin. But what is mercy? In the Old Testament, the Hebrew word for mercy is chesed which the strong Hebrew dictionary says can mean kindness and by implication, if it's applied towards God, piety, rarely opprobrium, reproof or subjectively beauty, favor, good deeds, kindly, kindness, merciful, mercy, pity, reproach or wicked thing. If you notice, there are good defini there are words that define mercy as good, and there are words that define mercy as, as bad. This comes from the root word that means to bow the neck, which implies listening, tenderness, and softness. So when we bow our neck like this or bow it like this, it shows that we show respect, or when we bow on the side, it means that we are listening. The word chesed is used 241 times in scripture, 127 of them, more than half, in the book of Psalms. 
And Psalm 136 has all of its 26 verses and with his mercy endures forever. So why would God want us to know this? Because of his faithfulness, his tenderness, and his generosity. And one commentator says that this word is used to denote mercy of someone who's superior to, be, uh, to an inferior. And it is related to a covenant, which is always between someone who's superior and an inferior. Which is, God, which is why God has mercy on Israel, because he has a covenant with them. And no matter how unfaithful the people were, God still shows his tenderness towards them. Some may ask, how can we say that God is tender when he allows the ten tribes of Israel to be, disposed, to be dispersed and he allowed Jerusalem to be sacked and ruined such that people were killed in the temple, innocent people were killed in the temple. So what is tender about violence? So I ask you this question. What will happen if a, per, if a parent sees, sees his or her child about to touch a hot element on a stove? So what will happen if a parent sees his or her child about to touch a hot element in a stove? Will they encourage that child and say, go ahead, you're so cute, I love you anyway. You can do whatever you want because I love you. Any parent who willingly allows that child to touch that hot element, quote, out of love, is not only irresponsible, but physically abusive. And yet, many people today think that mercy and love is about letting people do what is harmful to them or letting people do what will separate them from God. These people think that mercy, again, is a good feeling, being nice, unoffensive. Therefore, they tolerate sin and evil. To love mercy is not to have good feelings. It is to lead people to what is good for them. Loving mercy and doing justice are acts coming from unconditional love for God and others. This is where we go back to another definition of chesed. It, as I said, it can also mean reproof or reproach to bow the other person's neck to teach them. The tenderness of God is not tender feelings or weakness or softness. The tenderness is out of love and sometimes we need to exert force to show our love. So to give you an example, I'll take St. Augustine so that no one will ask me. St. Augustine speaks of this tenderness by con contrasting two actions. One is a caress and one is violence. Which one of these two actions express tenderness and mercy? Uh, a caress or violence? Normally we would think a caress expresses mercy. But St. Augustine, in his wisdom, he says, we can conclude that, but we need to look at the context. And these are his words. A boy stealer caresses a child. In the second case, I'll adapt his example to modern times. A father pulls a child's arms violently and dislocates his toddler's arm unintentionally to get the child out of the path of an incoming car. So in that context, 
which one denotes mercy? The caress of a pedophile to a child or the dad who pulls his child's arm to get him out of harm's way. The second one. So, I'm not talking of violence to a child. That is criminal and inexcusable. But sometimes mercy has to be violent to save us from a more fatal situation. That mercy comes from love because mercy is love made visible. Mercy is not weak or soft. It is a willful bowing of the neck towards the other. God bows his neck to us. He stoops down to pay attention to us, to listen to us, and to lead us to life if we will allow him. After Israel was destroyed, the writer of the book of Lamentations writes, The mercies of the Lord, it, the mercies of the Lord, that we are not consumed, because his commiserations have not failed. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Notice what he wrote God's mercies, and it is in the plural, that means they are many and will never end. In fact, they are new every morning because God is faithful. Every morning that we wake up, we encounter the mercy of God because God will not abandon us. He loves us and he, we trust that he will still be there for us. Because of that, we too must show mercy to God. How can that be? Unless we take the Hebrew example of meaning of bowing our neck to God. So when we bow our neck to God, we show reverence, adoration, and submission. We bow our heads to listen to him, to allow him to teach us and obey him so we can live with him. So mercy is similar to justice. Justice to God is to give him what is due, but mercy is to do it with reverence and respect. We also bow our necks to our neighbors. Does it mean that we must be kind and nice and not quarrel with them? Augustine says, hatred shows itself willingly gentle to deceive, but charity quarrels to correct. Let me repeat that. Hatred shows itself willingly gentle but deceives, uh, to deceive, but charity quarrels to connect. We must love our enemies, according to Augustine, to make them our brothers. And going back to our example of a child predator, this child predator speaks softly to seduce and to deceive a child, to destroy the child. The father speaks sternly and firmly to correct the child. So mercy, we should not equate mercy with gentle speech. Jesus, the all-merciful God, scolded many people. Jesus, the merciful God, scolded many people. God, in the Old Testament, scolded his people. So we should not equate gentle speech with mercy. Well, of course, we need to be gentle when we speak, but there are times when we need to speak out loudly, clearly, and defiantly for the good of the other person or for the good of the many. How do we bow our necks or show mercy to our neighbors? Our pot pattern of mercy is Jesus himself. He emptied himself to the Father to show us the love of the Father. And we have mercy on our neighbors when we empty ourselves to them 
and show them Jesus Christ. The Catechism tells us there are seven corporal works of mercy. To feed the hungry, give water to the thirsty, just as Peter did, <clears throat> to clothe the naked, to shelter the homeless, to visit the sick, to visit the imprisoned, or ransom the captive, to bury the dead. So these are corporal acts of mercy. Again, I go back to what we said earlier. Doing these doesn't mean that we have love. So we do this, these things because we have love. It is love that should propel us to do these things. It's not the other way around. Okay? <clears throat> and there are also seven spiritual works of mercy. To instruct the ignorant, to counsel the doubtful, to admonish the sinners, to bear patiently those who wrong us, to forgive offenses, to comfort the afflicted, to pray for the living and the dead. These are what we do for the good of others. But just doing them does not mean we are buying our way to heaven. If that is our purpose for doing these things, gaining points so that we can enter heaven or buying a ticket to heaven, we are mistaken. The motive for doing these should be love for God that translates to love for neighbor. By the way, talking about buying a ticket to heaven, St. Teresa of Avila said, the cheapest, you want to know the cheapest way to heaven? St. Teresa of Avila says, the cheapest way to heaven is to be a martyr, to die a martyr. So we cannot buy our way to heaven unless it is through martyrdom. It can be read martyrdom by literally giving our life, but most of us, it will be white martyrdom by dying to ourselves and our sinfulness. That is the ticket to heaven. Recently, um, the Lord has blessed me to experience this mercy in a concrete way. And I would like to take this opportunity to plug in my ministry to seafarers. Uh, we're looking for volunteers, so if you like uh, to volunteer, if the Lord has moved you, talk to myself or talk to Peter at the back. Uh, anyway, so the Lord has blessed me to experience this mercy in a very concrete way. As most of you know, the bishop assigned me to be the chaplain for seafarers uh, to, in the Stella Maris ministry. What we do is we go and meet the crew of the ships that docked at Ogden Point. Last December, three ships were docked at Ogden Point. My team was able to visit two of them, but we could not reach the other ship that was docked because uh, I tried contacting the agent and the agent call, call, contacted the ship, but they were not responding to his emails. And then the, my volunteers, our volunteers, thought of hosting the crew of the two ships for dinner. So these two ships committed to, said that eight of their crew will come. So we prepared for eight people. And on the night at 11 p.m., on the night before the dinner, we got an, I got an email from the other ship saying that they're sending 14 crew 14 of their crews for the dinner that next night. <laughs> so we, we panicked, but the uh, Lord's good. Everything went well. But as the 14 crew of that sh uh, ship came to Segers Hall at the cathedral with their captain, they were quite reserved and very wary because they didn't know what they were getting into. And uh, I welcomed them our, our volunteers, Peter in, and included, and his wife, uh, welcomed them. And I spoke to the captain. It turns out that the, the ship is mostly Ukrainian crew. And after dinner, we gave them a tour of the cathedral. And I was able to speak to the captain, and I talked to him. I told him, Captain, I've, I've been trying to get a hold of you to get on board your ship. 
but for no for no i'm not able to will you allow me to visit your ship and then he said yes so praise god and since they were ukrainian i asked uh, the ukrainian catholic priest to visit them with me and as this ukrainian priest and the, the crew spoke in ukrainian and russian i was just sitting there and observing them and i saw how this priest ministered to them he was engaging them talking to them in their own language in their own culture discussing about their lives there was some mention about what he was doing and what he like where he was ministering the priest listened listened to their needs and responded to them at that moment the crew needed someone who spoke their language and knew their culture and a few weeks ago i visited them at dry dock and the captain was happy to see me and he kept repeating to me we need god we need god that's what he was saying by making ourselves present to them they opened themselves up to ask for god we cannot be so arrogant to think that we know what the people we minister to need without listening to them and this is one of the temptations when we serve other people is that we think that they need something when in fact we we don't know what they need the bishop is really very good at this he always says listen to people you have to listen to what they need sometimes when i would talk to the bishop and i would say bishop can i do this and he would ask me is that what they want is that what they ask for we don't know unless we talk to them unless we listen and this is showing mercy to the people it's listening to what they need and addressing what they need so when we do our works of mercy we do not go out with an agenda to convert people not even to save our souls we do not go and tell them that they have to believe in jesus or else they will go to hell that is an imp that is very inappropriate that approach is counterproductive but instead we need to bend our necks to listen and then bend our knees to serve them the time to tell them about the saving power of jesus christ will come and it will open when there is an a relationship between you and the one you serve just as seen in that um, in that example with the seafarers we cannot go in and say here is what we give you this is what you need listen bend your necks listen god's the, the god's mercy is demonstrated through his forgiveness and forgiveness is not forgetting many people say forgive and forget that's not even scriptural don't believe that forgiveness is a financial term that means the person who owes me something uh, i have canceled his debt so i am not collecting the debt of someone who owes me something so that is the meaning of forgiveness god forgives us by not demanding that we pay for our sins but we have to be responsible for our sins though because he knows we can never pay for them but his son paid for our sins by taking on the effects and consequences of our sins on the cross so that god can cancel our debt to him our salvation was bought by jesus christ who was executed in the most humiliating way for our sake out of his love and just like he did 2000 years ago on the cross just like he did to the israelites in the desert in egypt back to adam and eve god wants to heal you of your pain and suffering which is why i am asking you to do a spiritual act of mercy 
It is simple, but very difficult to do. So God wants to heal you of your pain and suffering. It does not mean that he's going to take it away immediately. It may take months, may take years, even until we die, or even until purgatory. But the important thing is, if we empty ourselves to the Lord, God will heal us and make us whole. Do you believe that? Yes or no? Amen or no? If we empty ourselves to the Lord, God will heal us and make us whole. Many of us have been hurt by people we trust. Some of these could be in our families. Some of these are wounds that we carry for years, maybe decades. And I'm not trivializing your experience or pain, but I am asking all of you or all of us to forgive those who have hurt us the most. Only God knows how much pain this person has caused to you. You may even have said, I'm not going to forgive this person. But we need to forgive if we want to be healed. We cannot live in union with God if there is one person that we have not forgiven. It's not easy, but we have to do that. This is why the Lord says in, in, in the Lord's Prayer, forgive us our sin, our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. So God forgives us as we forgive those who sin against us. While we are commanded to love our neighbor, and this is one of the confusions about forgiveness or mistaken uh, ideas about forgiveness, we think that forgiving is forgetting or forgiving means that, yeah, we're all friends, nothing happened. We're all buddies. We can live together and live in peace. But Jesus commands us to forgive he did not command us to like those who have hurt us. There's a difference between loving and liking. Liking is based more on an emotion. Loving is, as we said, based on a decision. We do not need to have a warm feelings towards those who have hurt us. We do not forget the harm they have done for us, they have done to us. Because if we do forget, then we will put ourselves open to them hurting us again. Get, you understand? Like, I hope we should not forget what they have done so that that will not be repeated. But we need to forgive so that we can be healed. So, this is not easy, and it is an act of the will. But we must all desire the good of the other person, even if they have hurt us so badly. Doing so does not mean that we will feel better, as I said, but it will be the start of our healing process. Some people find it, may find it hard to forgive. God understands that. God understands if we find it hard to forgive. But the only way to confront this is not to turn away and say, I'm not doing it. The only way to do this is to confront it and tell the Lord, Lord, I want to forgive this person, but I cannot. Help me. Give the Lord permission to enter your burdened heart so that he can give you rest. Jesus said, come to me, all those who are heavily burdened, and I will give you rest. Forgiveness is a burden. Uh, unforgiveness is a burden to us. 
come to the Lord and give it to the Lord. So what I want, I'm inviting you to do is to bring this person to your mind. You may bow your heads, close your eyes. Imagine this person in your mind. If you forget his, this, their, their faces, you can call to mind their names. If you don't know their name, you can t say, describe this person, the person who did this to me. This person could be alive or could be dead. And if you want to forgive this person, or if you're trying to forgive this person, say this, pers say this prayer with me silently or aloud, however the Lord moves you. Lord Jesus, I come before you and offer you this person who has hurt me. You know the pain that I am suffering right now. You know what this person has done to me, how it destroyed my life, how it destroyed my innocence and trust in the goodness of humanity, how it has destroyed my faith in you. Yet here I am, O oh Lord. I make a decision to forgive this person. I cancel all the debt that this person owes me. I will not collect what was owed me because I know you are using this hurt to lead me to glory. Heal me, O Lord Jesus. Pour out your precious blood on me, O Lord Jesus, as I open my heart to you. And I pray that you will bless this person abundantly. Yes, Lord. Bless this person in super abundance. Thank you, Lord, for hearing my prayer. And Lord, if I find it hard to forgive, I admit to you and I ask you, Lord, to open my heart so that I may learn to forgive. And if this person is dead, I pray for this person's soul that he or she may be released from purgatory and that one day I will see this, this person in heaven with you. I also forgive myself, remove all bitterness, anger, frustration, and disappointments from me. I come to you, Lord Jesus. Heal me, save me, Set me free, never let me go. Oh Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of everything. Oh Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of everything. Oh Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of everything. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So we'll take a five-minute break. Uh, our